It is all over. England are the world champions. They're on the pitch now. But who cares? This is the greatest moment in the history of English football. After 1966, England could never win an international trophy again, even when people believed they had great chances at doing so. In 2021, they lost. In 2018, they lost again. In 2016, they lost again. And in 2006, they lost once again. This loss from England against Portugal in the 2006 World Cup was the first massive disappointment in years for the English side. Taking consideration of this loss will make us understand a lot of stuff correlated to England basically never winning trophies. But why is that? In order to find out, let's go back to June 2006. How you play the game with the people that write in your rules Ain't the fame that I'm after when paying the dues I've been through the pain that's reflected in the attitude Might be winning now, but the thing is that I had to lose England had built a fantastic team filled with some of the most talented players in the world at the time. This team was named by the media as Golden Generation. All of the players in that team are considered football legends today. The starting 11 was featuring the likes of Wayne Rooney, Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Michael Owen, David Beckham, Rio Ferdinand, John Terry, Ashley Cole, and Gary Neville. After failing to win the Euros in 2004, England had to at least have an impressive performance at the World Cup. After all, they were considered the favorites among teams like Brazil and France. After crushing Jamaica 6-0 in a friendly match, everyone was jumping on the Golden Generation hype train, saying they were going to win the World Cup. England was drafted in a relatively easy group in the group stages. They had to face Paraguay, Sweden, and Trinidad and Tobago. Everybody believed they were going to easily get nine points, but it didn't go as they thought. The first game was unexpectedly tough for England, who won with a simple 1-0, while also risking to end the game on a draw. The following game against Trinidad and Tobago scored in the last 10 minutes by Peter Crouch and Steven Gerrard. And then in the last group stages game, England tied 2-2 to Sweden. England qualified for the round of 16 and got the job done, but not as easily as everybody thought. In the meantime, something else was going on behind the scenes. England was staying in a small town of Baden-Baden. It was there that some girls decided that it was time to take all the spotlights away from the team and put them all on them. Those girls were the wives and girlfriends, commonly called the Wags. The queen of the Wags was Victoria Beckham, David's wife, who was regularly pictured with Cheryl, a singer who was Ashley Cole's girlfriend, and Colleen, Wayne Rooney's future wife. Colleen managed to spend almost 60,000 pounds during a one hour long shopping trip. Abby Clancy, who was Peter Crouch's future wife, was sent home after pictures of her snorting cocaine were leaked. Steven Gerrard's wife, Alex Curran, spent 25,000 pounds on the hotel champagne bottles. And that's just some of the WAG's stories. We can go on and list more, but to sum it up, basically all of them were involved in incidents of all kinds, except Wayne Bridge's girlfriend, Vanessa Peronsel, who was pregnant, and Theo Walcott's girlfriend, who was just 16. The WAGs were getting all kind of media exposure, with the front pages of the most important newspapers covered with their crazy stories and the backstages with the performance of the English team. Some believe that all of this happened because the girls, who mostly came from the working class, like Colleen Rooney, finally had the chance to enjoy themselves and be in places they had never seen before. In the meantime, England's World Cup run kept going forward. It was time for them to face Ecuador in the round of 16, a game that they won 1-0 thanks to Beckham's free kick goal. England were going to face Portugal in the quarterfinals. Portugal had a great team, featuring elite players at the time, such as Luis Figo and Deco, who couldn't face England because he had got a red card against the Netherlands in the round of 16, and also a young Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal had already knocked out England at the Euros in 2004, 
but the English were feeling confident this time. The, the thing about it is, like I said earlier, I just believe that we, in, a, in at wherever how we play, we should beat Portugal quite comfortably. I'm quite confident about that. And the first half felt stuck until Rooney decided to stomp on Ricardo Carvalho out of pure frustration, according to many. After the foul, his Manchester United teammate, Cristiano Ronaldo, rushed to the referee asking for Rooney to be sent off. Ronaldo would receive a lot of hate for this, and people believed his relationship with Rooney was compromised. To the 120th minute, still on the same score of 0-0, and therefore forcing the game to be decided on penalties. Lampard, Gerrard, and Carragher all missed. Hargraves was the only English player who scored. Cristiano Ronaldo had the chance to bring Portugal to the semi-finals. And this was the end of the 2006 World Cup. So, what went wrong for the golden generation? Such a great team who could never lift an international trophy. First of all, the bond between the players. You, Stevie G, Rio, Ashley Cole, the disconnect between the Manchester United players and the Chelsea players and potentially the Liverpool players. It was down to really, from my perspective, and Frank will give you his after, but the obsession with winning. I didn't want to see Frank have an edge on me. I didn't want to speak to him about anything that might, he might be able to take away and, and use to, to facilitate his team winning, etc. And I, it just became an unwritten kind of conduct. It was clear that the players didn't really get along with each other, especially Gerard and Lampard. People thought that they hated each other. Going to the national team was a struggle. Um, you know, when I speak to other international players when I played, like you, you could see in the and stuff, they can't wait to go away with Brazil. It's the best 10 days of their season, if you like. Um, whereas you didn't really get that feeling when you, when you went away with England. You were looking forward to the games, but everything else around the games was a bit like... <sighs> and this was making every game more complicated. But I, I, if, if I asked you, is, did, did you ever play in an easy England game where you come off mm. and you went, that was like no. the easiest game, like you didn't even mm. get a sweat on. Mm. Well, for our clubs, like, you could name loads of games, you probably forgot more than yeah. you'd remember how many easy games you had. Mm. With England, it was never easy. I always used to think this is graft. Go to like Mold Moldova and mm. come off sweating thinking, Jesus, we oh, got through that one. Why? Because tactically we were, we, were, we were so poor. But this was probably the slightest of the issues. This was the bigger one. Was, I don't think we had a manager who was, maybe, I don't know if that's the right word, brave enough. The manager, Sven Eriksson at the time, was the one who conditioned most of the team with all his decisions. We had the best midfield on paper. We had the best midfield players in the world at the time. Yep. Lampard, Gerrard, Scholes, Beckham, Hargreaves, Carrick. I mean, you can go on. And even below that, you had more players. But a depth of talent in there, ridiculous. We played a rigid 4-4-2. So if you've got the best midfielders in the world, you try and get them in a team with a diamond or whatever, you play them. And all of these guys could have been interchangeable within that system. You, should, you see Spain now, Germany, they would have fitted into them team because they would have made sure their best players, most creative players would have been on the pitch. What Capillos. was our patterns of play? Do, do you remember? Do, uh, no, no one ever there sat no down and gone, right, mm. when you get the ball, you need to have this, this, this option. When the goalie gets the ball, you need to be here. When Rio gets the ball, you can be here or here. And, and you know, like you see with players now, there's clear patterns. The it's like standard for even the poor teams. You can see what they're trying to do. With us, I don't know what we were trying we to do. We relied on individuals. Another bad decision he made was calling up Theo Walcott, leaving Jermaine Defoe home. And it was a questionable decision because Theo Walcott ended up playing zero minutes on the pitch. And according to Ericsson, the 23rd man wasn't going to change the World Cup. Still, many English today feel like Defoe could have been a lot more useful for the team. Ericsson made some questionable tactical decision, but he also said that. I think the pressure at that time was very, very big that we should go to the final. In fact, the media played a big role as they were putting pressure on the teams because they had to win, according to them. But then they were also creating a negative environment with the WAG stories. If I made this premise on the golden generation, it's actually because there's countless parallelism to today's England. So let's move forward to the 2024 Euros. We should have already won a Euros. Like we're already on thin ice. What I will say is, he's got to go. The guy's a joke. He's got to go. Well, he's got to go now or? Get him out. Southgate out, 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 out. But this coach is the reason we're not winning trophies. Actually, 
It might be too early to talk about this. Let's go back to November 2016. After the departure of coach Sam Allardyce, Gareth Southgate was appointed as New England's manager in 2016. England at the time was doing incredibly bad. The 2010 and 2014 World Cups were both two failures, and the Euros in 2012 weren't great either. Before becoming coach of the English team, Southgate was the coach of the under-21 England team. And before becoming a manager, Southgate was an average footballer, who wrote his name in the English history books after this moment. He missed a penalty against Germany at the Euros in 1996, which led to England being knocked out. Ever since the day he was appointed as coach, the question has always been the following. Is he the right man for England? Today, the question is still unanswered. Southgate's first major tournament for England was in the World Cup in Russia in 2018. England were coming off of an embarrassing loss to Iceland in the round of 16 of the last tournament they played, the Euros. And their last World Cup in 2014 wasn't great either. So England are out after just two games and uh, before even Germany have played two matches. Um, what a humiliation. Despite the fact that these past results were discouraging, England actually ended up reaching the semi-finals, which was a fantastic result and everybody loved Southgate at the time for that. But then the Euros came and everybody wanted England to win. England reached the final and the English fans were feeling confident that they would beat an Italian side coming off of a 30 plus game unbeaten streak. But this is what happened. On his young shoulders, Saka has to score. It's saved by Donnarumma. And it's Italy who are the champions of Europe. Southgate went under the criticism of everyone after this game, because people believed his mentality was too defensive, and also he didn't pick the right penalty shooters, leaving an inexperienced Saka with the pressure of taking the most important penalty of the tournament. Southgate is one of the most controversial figures in the world of football. No matter the great results he had gotten with England, he still has to face a lot of criticism from part of the English fans. Southgate has gotten a national team that would struggle in all major tournaments to a World Cup semi-final in 2018 and Euro final in 2021, which was the first time in decades. But people wanted him gone. Why? England is living a second golden generation and people have high expectations once again, this time with some differences. Over the last four years, we've had a golden generation that Southgate has wasted. We've got the best league in the world, and we've continually got English clubs winning the Champions League or getting in the final. This is an opportunity that cannot slip through our fingers. Mark Goldbridge is actually right, because unlike 2006, this time the Premier League has developed into the best and biggest league in the world, with the largest pool of talents there is. It's absolutely correct for fans to expect England to win a trophy. And I'm terrified of it, because in five years time, we might not have a golden generation, we might have a good coach. But this coach is the reason we're not winning trophies. We Southgate's tactics are too defensive and do not take advantage of England's attacking power. At the time we're recording this video, England are still playing Euro 2024, but brutally underperforming. Overall, the reason they can't lift any trophy is that they lack a clear management structure, and the media puts way too much pressure on the team, making them look like the best in the world when it really isn't like that.